Father, just thank you for this uh, wonderful day you've given us, Father. It's been raining for the last couple of days, Father, but this day just, uh, seems just like a wonderful day. And I uh, just can't come and just pray and worship you, Father. Just bless this, uh, the brothers and sisters who are here, and uh, bless those who haven't seen for a long time, Father. And just uh, be with Pastor that gives this message, and pray that uh, this would just be able to share this message with people around us. Thank you and thank you. Thank you. Amen. Anyone stand up for the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He sent into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Today's our Bible scripture is Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. Uh, Turn to the <laughs> That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than uh, clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in bars, for your Heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And, when, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. If God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good afternoon. Why don't we greet each other? Today we have a Tia. Just give him a big hug. Give her a big hug. Bless her. <laughs> God bless you. God loves you. God loves you. Thank you. Children, mommy, God bless you. God loves you. <laughs> God loves you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Okay, how can I experience God continually? That's our homework, right? We're trying very hard to experience God because God is a living God. In Matthew, Jesus said that. I'm not a dead one. 
but I'm still live. He's alive. Amen? Amen. See, every day we need to experience God. That's the only way we can survive, actually. But we think that we are smart. We think that our lives are our own. So we're going to live here one life and then die. Who cares? No one's ever been there yet. How do you know there is heaven and hell? See, all those things constantly in our hearts, deep in our hearts. But we don't know the, the, the answer. That's why we are afraid of talking about that issue. But as Christians, God gave us an answer through the Bible. So there is no more fear. We are not afraid of anything because of what we believe. In the book of John, Jesus said, when I leave this world, I'll give you, I'll send the Holy Spirit to you. Then He will guide you. He will teach you. He will remember the things that I've told you. See, that's why now the responsibilities upon us. So decision making is very important. Not only to accept Jesus as a Savior on a daily basis, we need to make a decision and we need to determine our hearts because of what we believe. No one has ever seen God. But without seeing me, you're more blessed, Jesus said. Because Jesus gave us the Word of God. So through this, help of the Holy Spirit will let us know. See, because we don't experience God every day, we live on our own way. Because we don't see God, we don't experience God, it comes down to what? Jesus said in Matthew 6, you little faith. So it comes down to the point of where you have faith or not. That's the big issue. Because by faith, we believe Jesus. If we could see Jesus, we don't need faith. We just follow. Then He will take care of everything. He will do the rest of the things in our lives. But the big problem is we don't see Him. That's why our responsibilities are to determine our hearts and to have desire what is it <laughs> to know God okay so today yeah how can I experience God continually and this context Jesus is talking about worry did you ever learn how to worry <laughs> huh <laughs> No? No one taught you? <laughs> then how did you know how to worry? <laughs> okay, let's take a look. The definition of worry, divided mind. In Greek, my mind is divided in more than ten ways. And then, choke, 
strangle. Because if you worry too much, what's going to happen? Your heads are going to be, what, blown up. Choked to death. Because there is no solution. But we worry. Worry means what? Controlling the uncontrollable things. Can you control your life? Why? You know that you cannot control your life, but you don't want to live your life the way someone in the sky. Your job. Can you control your job? <laughs> huh? How about your health? Nowadays, how many, how many people have cancer? I never knew there was a cancer in our blood vessel. What do you call that? There is a name for that. Recently, a pastor I knew, we knew actually, he died in cancer. But he had something under his foot. Who could ever think about that could be a cancer? And then within a couple of months, the spread out is gone. That was cancer, skin cancer. Can you control that? So you got to be careful if something black or brown spot on your skin all of a sudden, you better go to this doctor. Or maybe this is the sun allergy or <laughs> California's weather is too good. Got to be careful. See, those things are uncontrollable. It's beyond our control. But we still think about it. That's what Jesus is talking about, worry. When you worry, you cannot enjoy today. Because you worry means what? You think about something in the future that hasn't come yet. That's why you cannot enjoy the moment of today. That brings down to the point where you don't have any faith. You don't believe Jesus. You don't believe God. So what keeps me from experiencing God? Okay, Jesus is talking about verse 25. Worry is not reasonable. Why is that? What does it say, 25? That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you are enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? What is more important? Your outlook appearance? We always worry about our external. But we should be worrying about internal. Because we're going to die. You know animal worries? Do you think they're not worrying? How do you know? They're worrying if they don't have anything to eat. What do they do? Eat the owner. <laughs> you know, human beings, the only ones who worry. Does tree worry? When the storm comes, oh, I need to find a place to hide. 
No, they just stay where they are and then they face it. Only human beings worry. Worry about what? We need to worry about what we worry. <laughs> Have you ever worried about that? <laughs> we need to worry about our salvation. That's the only thing we should worry. Whether I am saved or not. Whether I can go to heaven or not. How many people in today's world, they think they could go to heaven? I am not in the position to judge and say something about their faith, but according to the Bible, what did Jesus say? I never knew you. Just a one, one sentence, I never knew knew you, meaning that you cannot come into my kingdom. We need to worry about our salvation. You know, I was so shocked. Last week I heard from uh, my friend, Pastor. You know the Mother Teresa, she wrote five letters to Roman Catholic. Vatican. The one of them was revealed in public. You know what she asked? Who is Mother Teresa? Someone says she is a great warrior. You know she asked, Father, is there really heaven? I am so scared. If there is a really heaven, show me, teach me. How can I go? That's the last question. I'm so shocked. She did great work. She influenced many, many people all over the world. But before the last breath, she raised the question, how can I go to heaven? You know, because we worry too much. We worry too much. Jesus said, it's not reasonable. Why? Life is the most important thing. Life is more valuable than food. Life is more valuable than clothes. We worry about our ex external. What to wear. What to eat. What to drink. Oh, I'm on diet, so I need to drink diet coke. We worry about those things. If you have peace, whatever, it comes to you. Either you face it, you deal with it. You don't hide yourself. But what is our tendency? We want to find a place to hide. You don't want anybody to find out who I am. What I did. Why? Because we worry too much. We assume. Because we don't know the answer. We don't know the solution. That's why we assume and presume. We say, we do, it causes to bring what? Negative result.
Next verse, 26, 28. Worry is not natural. Jesus is saying here, 26. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. Your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? 28. You worry about your clothing. Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. He's talking about the birds in the air. Release in the field. Who is taking care of those? My Father in heaven. So think about that. The one problem we could never solve, that is salvation. Jesus came. He sold. He saved us. That's what Jesus is talking about here. Are you far more valuable to him than those birds and lilies? Your bodies, your outlook appearances, your external things. What is more important? Internal things. That is salvation. I came and I died for you. You could come into heaven now. What else do you need more? You know, when you leave tomorrow, let's say just hypothetically, my life is terminated. Tomorrow, I must leave this world. What would you do? What is more important? Life itself. Your life. If I die tomorrow, Nothing will happen. I cannot speak to you anymore. What is more important? My life and I am saved. I can go to heaven. Because Jesus died for me. That is a belief. We need to believe Jesus Christ by faith. Without assurance of salvation, we can easily compromise things in the world. If you have an assurance of salvation in your heart, you don't compromise. You don't hide yourself. You don't want to chicken yourself out. You want to be bold. Because no matter what is going to happen to my life, I can go to heaven. I can be with the Lord. See, that is our ultimate hope. But we think about something that we don't know what will happen. That is worry. We you worry too much. And you pre-plan everything on your own ability, your thoughts, your skill. Does life go that way? I assume <laughs> that you already experienced many, many times. Life is not going the way you want to go. Life doesn't want to go the way you plan. <laughs> because what? We worry. We want to control uncontrollable things in our lives. What about going to heaven? Can you control? But what about going to the other side? Can you control? Say yes. <laughs> yes. 
even if you don't say yes, you can go easily. So there are only few things we can control, and we need to worry only one thing, whether I am saved or not. Whether I have an assurance of faith or not. Because we don't have that assurance that we worry. We doubt. Third step, unbelief. Never mind. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live. Number three, worry is not help, helpful. Oh, by the way, Psalm 145 said, God satisfies everyone. Okay? And worry is not helpful. 27, verse 27. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Another version. Can you add even one inch to your height? Can you do that? You can lose your weight. You can put some more meat onto your body. But what about height? Nowadays may be the technology, medical science, okay? Piece of bone can add, glue it, make you tall. What do you call them now, the shoes? Oh, oh, from outside, unable to tell. But inside the soul is what? Five <laughs> inches to ten inches. <laughs> I don't know how, how they can handle to walk so smoothly. Maybe technology, they studied. <laughs> You know, these things Jesus is talking about here. These things are unnecessary to worry, but we worry. But we should be worrying about only one thing, that is salvation. Salvation! No matter what, I go to heaven. I can be with Jesus Christ. If you doubt that, worry comes. Okay, so I must check these things to experience God every day, believing God. Just simply believe. How do I believe? Read the Word of God. Amen. Amen means, yes, you're right. I will believe. I will live according to what you say in the Bible. I'll try my best. But I still worry. Holy Spirit, help me. You know, these things, verse 32a, what these things? What to eat, to drink, and to wear dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. In other words, even if we are believers, when you think about this, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, you are equivalent to unbelievers. The moment you worry, you don't have faith. Basically, Jesus is telling us. Worry means we just put God away from us. And think about it. Let me handle this first. I know how to solve this. And then later, you re-invite him. Jesus, can you just take a look at it again? 
what grade did I get? Jesus said, mm, no grade. <laughs> Jesus won't give us F. Never. But zero, no, not available. N A. Why? <laughs> He's always giving us a second chance. He's not like a props in the college. Oh, you have. You need to retake this school. Oh my goodness, I need to take it again. <laughs> You know, believe in God. I don't know how, how I can explain to you. Just believe. That's what Jesus said. Believe me. Unless you experience God, it is not easy to understand. That's why we need to determine our hearts. Okay, you are my savior. You are my second king. Coming king, I mean. I believe what, said, what you said in the Bible. Philippians 1.6 God who began the good work within us continue his work until it is finished. How can you believe this? Just believe. God is the one who began the good work in our lives. That is the salvation. Isn't He going to take care of ourselves? Take care of His own children until the end of this day. That's what he referred here. Birds and flowers in the field. You are far more valuable than those because I saved you. I gave you a right to call me Abba Father. Some places call me friend. Who's going to take care of the bird in the, in the air? My Father in heaven. And think about, we are created in His image. We are the only ones. Animals. Animals were created in various kinds but human being one kind we think we have a different color so we are all different but originally one kind that's why Jesus said I need every one of you in me to work together to build healthy church. Philippians 1.6 We just believe He's going to finish our, our life here. He is ready to help us and guide us, provide things for us. It is in our hands whether we decide and we determine our heart and we follow you. Number two, we put God first place in every areas of our life. 33. This is a famous verse everyone should know. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Okay? Seek the kingdom of God. Seek Him first. And then live Righteously. 
There is a step, logical step. When you put God first in your life, He will let you know how you should live. And just say, yes, I believe. You are my God. You are my Savior. Okay, this is the right way. I will follow. Then, third step is what? He will give you everything you need. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? <laughs> Sometimes we just say amen and we forget about it. <laughs> because right after that, we worry. <laughs> Start worrying. <laughs> Jesus said, you little faith. You know literal means in Greek, little faith? No faith. You have no faith. Okay, number three, live one day at a time. <clears throat> verse 34, the last verse. Okay? Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worry. Today's trouble is enough for today. Hallelujah. <clears throat> If you worry about tomorrow, you don't enjoy your life today. Whatever you eat, indigestion. Because of your worry. What you drink, it doesn't cleanse your body. That's why people drink what? Liquor. To forget about tomorrow. They want to enjoy today, but because of worry, they can't. So they look for a substitute. can help them to enjoy. Gamble. Gambling. Same. You know, when you go to Las Vegas, what happens? You just sit down and look at the machine. The number. You just insert coins and ding, 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 ding. The bar comes. Oh, man, I missed one. I'll try it again. It's a deception. You think you're enjoying, you're having fun with the machine. Wow, your, your you know, emotional level is up. You cannot think about anything. Only what? Dollar sign. You know, it's like this. When a hitchhiker, what do they do on the street? Nowadays, they, they never stop. They just pass by. But a long time ago, they're so kind. They just stop the car in front of you. Where would you like to go? Oh, I need to go certain places. Oh, hop in. I'll just take you there. 30 years ago. Now? Be your own. <laughs> okay, when, you know, he checked her, he checked the car and hopped in. And he has a heavy backpack on his back. But inside the car, he still has a backpack. So the driver was so curious. You don't have to have a backpack on your shoulder. Why don't you take it off? You know, when you get in the car, naturally what you do? What do you do? Take it off. But we worry too much. What if this guy is going to <laughs> do something about this? Same thing in our lives. Worries we cannot see, but in your heart. 
too heavy. Maybe it's oppressing your liver and your stomach. So sometimes I wonder, that's why the stomach gets bigger, bigger, <laughs> burging out. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't fix it. <laughs> if you give your worries to Jesus Christ. Mm. See, so live one day at a time. Tomorrow, we have no guarantee to live. We just assume that I'm going to live tomorrow. But not every one of us. Tomorrow is not our hands. It's God's hands. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to do a new thing today. Meaning that we don't have guarantee tomorrow. That's why we need to experience. We need to hear His voice. We need to have an assurance of salvation in our hearts, in our minds, and in our bodies to live. Then He will do a new thing through us. Worry is learning things to respond. Worries learn to respond. The more you worry, you know how to respond. Negative way. Only thing we should be worrying about is our salvation. Am I saved? Other than that, give it to everything to Jesus Christ. He said, I know what you worry. These three things are what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. It's our necessity. On a daily basis, we need it. We must have it. Otherwise, we're going to die. But you are far more than valuable, more valuable than birds and li lilies. Far more valuable. Because I saved you. You are my children. I'm your God, he said. So what should I practice every day? See how loving Jesus is. He gave us every detail in our lives, what we should do. First Peter 5, 7, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Amen. We need to practice every day. What am I worrying about it right now? Studying. Am I going to get an A? I don't have enough time. What should I do? Forget about it. Study whatever you could do. Pass. A doesn't, doesn't get you to executive level in certain company. Enjoy your life. You know, I forgot the quotes, but life is not the days in our life. Life is the moments we enjoy. That's what exactly Jesus said that tomorrow you don't have any guarantee. Don't think that you have guarantee. Believe me. Because you are mine, Jesus said that. You want to experience God every day? Believe in by reading the Word of God. Reading. 
and put God first in every areas of my life and live one day at a time. Let's pray. Father God, we never learn how to worry, but my mind's always going somewhere to think about 